We are learning through implementation of the flexible working model at Vive that the workplace is about so much more than just a building. In fact, the success of a workplace is realised in, in the way in which it supports its inhabitants. A building is just a building. It's the way people use the workplace that brings it to, to life and defines its value. In the presentation today, I'm going to introduce four key questions that I think are really important if we are to keep evolving our workplace. Firstly, I hope I can start to paint a picture about the importance of consciously thinking about the future in order to plan the action we need to take now to get there. So even though we're thinking about the future, we're doing it with a view to taking action now because we know that the future doesn't just happen. It's created by us and the action we take now. Secondly, if we're going to start consciously thinking about the future and the world of work, we need to decide the best way to do this. So what's our methodology? What are some of the key questions we need to ask ourselves in regards to the emerging themes in regards to the future of work? And how are we going to answer them? So in other words, where to from here? Casey's workplace model was developed in late 2013, and it certainly starts to recognise that the workplace is more about culture and behaviour than it is just about space. We also know through our experience at Vibe just how powerfully the physical space can influence wellbeing and behaviour. People's experiences of Vibe have been amazing um, in terms of the way it's made them feel and the impact it's had on their lives, both professional and personal. We're learning that the space can send powerful messages about the nature of the organisation that creates and inhabits it. The space tells us this is who we are, this is what we value, and this is where we are going. As explored further in the discussion paper that supports this presentation, we know that the world of work is changing at a rapid rate. Many say faster than it ever has before. So in order to take full advantage of the opportunities and challenges that this fast-paced, changing landscape brings, Casey has to continue to grapple with the ever-changing nature of work and the role of the workplace. We can't stop now. Thinking about the future and working to understand the evolving nature of work and the role the workplace plays is a new area of business for Casey. This new area transcends traditional areas of work, such as that performed by organisational performance, human resources, IT and building services. This new area of business then requires a new approach. Often referred to as strategic foresight, this new approach will enable Casey to take a long-term view of the world of work and use the insights gained to ensure Casey's workplace continues to evolve and develop in the way we want it to and need it to into the future. One of the key strengths of the strategic foresight process is that it will provide us with a way to move beyond our experiences and perspectives. So we can look at a range of expanded potential futures for the workplace um, that stretch our imagination and thinking. This is really important if we're to move beyond simply reinventing the business as usual as we know it. But this is about taking action. And the process will help us work out the action we need to take now that will shape and create the future. So what do we want? or need the future to be. Let's start by having a look at some of the trends that are already shaping this future and the key questions that we need to consider in relation to the role of work. We all know that Casey is one of the fastest growing municipalities in Australia. This growth in population combined with the introduction of rate capping will place considerable strain on Casey's resources. In addition, the demand for council services is likely to change as the existing population ages and new residential areas are created. So how can Casey provide a greater level of high quality services to a population set to double in size by 2036? What are the features of the physical workspace that will best support this? Five generations of employees together in the workplace by 2030. This is gonna mean we need different ways of engaging with the workplace. And the ageing population will mean that 16-year-olds will be working along 70-year-olds. So what does this look like? And how can the physical workplace support this? There's also a growing trend toward regarding real employee engagement um, by focusing on the employee experience and treating our, our 
um, staff in the same way that we treat our customers. This involves understanding what employees value and really care about by asking people why they're working for us and what they're passionate about. This is being driven by the need to attract the best and brightest employees in a future that sees people choosing to work for us, work with us, not for us, or having to. So how do we create employee experiences that matter? And how do we create a workplace that will result in people choosing to work with us? While it appears that the space savings generated through the flexible working model implemented at Five may suggest a greater capacity to reduce the desk to person ratio, it is important that we remain focused on the broader context of the workplace and the overall benefits to be achieved through the flexing work working model, rather than simply focusing on cost savings. This is going to be particularly challenging within the context of a rate capping environment, where there's likely to be ongoing pressure to do more with less. So how can we manage the, the growing demand for space, given the potential for pressure to drive down costs by lowering the desk to ratio, the desk to staff ratio? And how can we use the flexible working model to drive productivity and performance even further? We know that change is constant, but the speed of technological change we are likely to experience into the future is unprecedented. The increased virtual connectivity associated with these changes is going to allow us to tap into a much wider collective intelligence and provide us with new approaches to solve problems as we learn and teach along the way through implementation. So how will our organisation's culture respond to this constant change? What will be the role of our leaders? And how can the physical space embody this? We've always assumed that people need to work within or for our organisations, but this is changing. The emergence of the sharing economy, such as the rise of Airbnb, Uber and the freelancer.com, provides people with different choices that suggest we can no longer assume that they will need to work for us into the future. We've made, made fantastic progress through the creation of Five, but we need to continue focusing on a workplace where people want to be, not have to be. The next step in this process, oh, so how are we going to answer these questions? And where to from here? So the next step in this process will bring representatives from all levels and parts of the organisation together to explore the issues identified through this presentation because we know that bringing people together like that is an important part of creating engagement into the future as well as enhancing the employee experience. Based on the outcome of those discussions, along with some more research, we'll prepare some scenarios to help us consider a range of expanded potential futures for Casey's workplace for consideration by those same representatives. The next step in this process will then be a three to five year action plan to help us continue to evolve the workplace and shape the future we want and need to create. It's expected that this kind of process will now be ongoing as new trends emerge, forcing us to relook at the future. Because we know that the future doesn't happen, don't we? It's created by us now and the action that we take. Done. <laughs>